G'day guys. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to do graphics like this in Final Cut Pro. Stick around. Hey guys, this is Doug from Doug Houston YouTube and this channel is all about how to's, tech and software. So stick around. If you're into that sort of thing, subscribe and check the bell. You'll get notified and you won't miss any videos at all. Have you ever wanted to do special video titles that you would repeat over and over because it's a, a lower third or a bug, a stinger, something that pushes in, pushes out that you would use regularly in all your videos. You don't wanna to have to do that from scratch every time. Well, that's what we're gonna look at today. Something I've come up with in Final Cut Pro, so you don't need anything else. Uh, uh, externally, you can put it all together in Final Cut Pro, export as a video that you can bring into your YouTube videos, overlay them, and come up with magic. So let's head over to the computer and check it out. Here we are in Final Cut Pro, and uh, let's have a look at a sample of what we're gonna be working on today. This is what we're looking to bring up, is one of these. A lower third of graphics, text, motion and sound. Bring that back to Final Cut Pro, so that's what we're gonna be working on. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is uh, a little bit of preparation and uh, the first thing we need to have ready is our export settings. You can see here that you can add destination and you can pick export file as normal and then come up with uh, a destination. This is the sort of thing we're looking for is when we set this up, we set it up, if possible, as Apple ProRes 4444. And that will help us with the overlay capability of the exported video, which we can then bring back into Final Cut Pro and use as a graphical text. The second thing you're going to want to do is when you open your new project, new project, give it a name, and what we can do is pick whichever usual format you like to use with 720, 180 and resolution and frame rate. Make sure for rendering you also select the Apple ProRes 4444. Do that and we'll be good to go. So we are, we've got a blank timeline. The first thing we need to do is put in here on the main timeline a um, not the placeholder but something that's called a, uh, a gap so we go to edit insert generate a gap and here we have a gap we want to make that the length of our t whole title sequence so in this case I like to go 11 seconds so let's zoom in on that to fill our timeline and there we go so at the moment we've just got Nothing. It's just a gap. Now, now the whole concept of this is we want to uh, load up all our elements uh, stacked on top of each other, and much like you would use, say using layers in Photoshop or GIMP or one of those other graphic programs. It's a similar sort of concept. Uh, the first thing we want to add is our uh, lower third uh, background, and we're going to do that by going into the Titles and Generators. Going into generators and picking the appropriate generator. Usually, if you go in the backgrounds, there's something that you can use that has motion, like say arc. Now, each of these have different properties that you can amend with the colors and so forth, and some of the elements of them. So, I'm going to pick drift for this one, and again, I'm going to change the duration to 11 seconds. So, at the moment, what we've got is a full blown full screen generator which is essentially a background what we can do is open up uh, inspector and look at the settings for that we can change the color I'm going to go with the blue 
And we can change these rectangle shapes. We can go with rounded rectangles. We can go with slanted, which is a bit like that. I'm going to go with rounded rectangles for the time being. Next thing we want to do is reduce that down to just the lower third area that we want to use it in. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to go to effects, masks, <laughs> and we're going to go shape mask. And I'm going to drop that on the generator and instantly we've applied a generator effect. Now we can look at the generator shape mask options, I should say, in the video tab here in Inspector. And we can see that we can change the opacity and the curvature, how much curve we want in it. Don't want too much curve in it, so we'll just put it close to where it was. We can also uh, just adjust it on the screen by dragging it down and up, making it the size we want it to be. We want it long and thin like this. And then we can actually grab the middle marker. Whoop, not that one, this one. And move it to where we want it. Now I'm going to offset it because I want it to, I want my graphic to slide in from the left and look like it's just hanging on to the left and then slide back out. So we're going to set it up to where its finishing point is going to be. Now we can also adjust here the feather, which is the amount of fuzz, fuzziness around it. I'm going to put, I'm going to put it on zero actually because I want a solid one. I'm going to change it up a bit here. What we've got at this point is our background. Now we can start laying some of our graphic and text on top of that. I'm just going to uh, close the inspector for a second. So we've got a bit more space to work with. I'm going to go back to our assets here. The first thing I'm going to do is grab a picture, which is going to be this one. And we're going to grab that down and we're going to drag that on top again and changing the duration to, you guessed it, 11 seconds. We obviously don't want it to be full screen, so we're going to go into transform, drag down the size, and I want to place it so that it sits right on the bottom of the line and up against the side of the screen. Now I'm going to... Okay, next step is another layer. We're just going to apply our layers here. The next layer is actually going to be a title, so I'm going to go back to title to generators titles and we want a basic title which is this one drop that in change duration to that and then we can go in and edit I'm gonna pop the inspector first click on that double click to bring this up and the first thing we're gonna do is type in the text second thing I'm gonna do is pick my channel font that I like to use which in this case is highway gothic um, then I'm going to put, move it to where we want to put it. We can grab the center circle there. And I am going to increase the size to about there. We're going to tweak this along the way. I'm just going to put it there. And that will do for now. For that, let me just place that there so we can see what we're working with. Now, I've, I've centered the text to the left because I'm going to add a few extra graphical elements over in this section here. Now what we haven't done, well let me go back to the text there, what we haven't done is put a drop shadow on that. In actual fact I've forgotten a couple of drop shadows along the way. So we'll go back and uh, put those in. I'd like to increase the drop shadows about 80-85%. Now this one here, I'm going to put a drop shadow on this image as well. Because we want to give, it, make it pop, make it be uh, look, look a little bit more three-dimensional, in the sense of it's sort of up off off the background. It's an all flat. So we're going to go in and find the drop shadow, which is just down here. There it is, and we're going to drop that onto him, and then we'll close that. And instantly, you'll see a little drop shadow thing. I like to off-center it to the right a little bit like that. We're going to fine-tune that later, of course. Let's click off that. Now, extra graphical layers, of course. Let's go back to our assets. That's the one I want. We're going to drop that down. Another layer, of course. Duration. And then, of course, we need to... I'm just going to hide the inspector and open up the transform so that we can size it up. Alright, 
all the basic elements from there. We're going to fine tune positions and whatnot later. But let's, let's head into the next section. What we want to do at the moment when we play this, it's just a static graphic that's sitting here. Let's have a quick, quick look. We'll just a couple of seconds in and just play that full screen there. You can see only motion at the moment is that graphic in the back there, which is the, which is the generator that was playing till the end there. So it's just a very, very static. What we want to do is put a bit of movement action in that to bring the title in and to remove the title out at the end. So let's uh, do that next. And we're going to do that by going into our transitions. We want a movement and then we're looking for slide, which is here. I'm going to drop that onto the first layer, which is the generator. Let's move that out of the way. You'll see that this has some elements that we can change. They default both sides to slide in right, so this is correct, sliding in, going right. Then we want to slide out at the end and to the left. We want to apply this same uh, transition with the default settings to every layer. So we're going to do that right now. I'll be right back. All right, they're all applied there. And we'll just let that render out and then we'll see what the, we'll give it a quick play to see what the motion is like there and you'll get an idea of what we've got happening okay we're back we've applied all those motions and now we're going to play that back real quick so you can have a look let's go full screen there and you can see it's all slides in at the same time stays on does its thing and then slides out so that's pretty good now the final step that's going to make that really pop is our audio so what we want to do is go down the bottom to where the audio goes um, you can get some really great um, whooshes on swooshes and stingers if you go into uh, the sound section here and go to sound effects and then under the sound effects tab you've got a whole bunch of sound effects from iLife and Final Cut Pro that you can select from now I've already selected the ones I want to use so basically let me go back to my assets here and go to audio this is the first one I'm going to use and this is the second one I'm going to use. They seem to go, go together like the reverse of each other. First of all, we'll grab the number wish 17 and drag that down here. And you sort of want to load, line up the waveform to where you think that's going to happen. I'm looking at the actual waveform here, not whether item is joining to make sure it's lining up with the motion of it all. And do the same for the exiting motion. Now we're going to have to tweak this a little bit so let's play it through and see how the timing is. Not too bad for the intro incoming and here we go. Um, I think the timing on that last one was a little bit off so I'm going to drag it this way. Let's try that again. Yeah it's better. Let's have a look at the front again. Seems to work. So now we've got what we can call a full motion and sound graphic text overlay. Now our final step is of course to output that to a video file using our file or share and then overlay or export file or the one that we've uh, we saved earlier and set up earlier which is this one we're going to do that in just a sec i'm going to fine tune this this until it's ready for me to output and we'll come back we'll output that and then we'll look at how that overlays in an actual project so i'll be right back we're back i've done a bit of fine tuning of the graphic and this is this is what we've got going on now you won't tell much difference uh, between the last clip and this clip uh, just uh, tweak some of the graphic elements and positions and that's about all I did so let's output that now like we said share and use our, our, our output setting that we set uh, we don't need to do anything in here but you can see that it's automatically set for 4444 four, four, four. also because the project is also set for 4444 four, 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 sort of makes it foolproof for you click next and we're going to leave that called tutorial overlay and we're going to output that as a movie right now. 
we'll let that we'll let that render and share out and c build the completed file and we'll be right back and we're back and as you can see we're finished sharing out the uh, file so let's have a quick look it's sitting behind us here we play it back it's in nice high resolution looking smicko and there it goes there it is so let's close that now let's show you how we can use that in a in a graphic so what i'm going to do is close this current library that we've got open here and pull open a library that has some even some footage i can just overlay it on to give you an example of how this works so let this one and i'm just going to open a new project and call it and it's just going to be a standard Apple ProRes 422 project and I'm going to go find some footage uh, from my early recording there we go, now stand up there, so, so we've just got a basic thing, so what I want to do that's going to render out, but we're going to import media, we're going to go bring that file in first of all because we haven't done that yet and it is the one called tutorial overlay import selected and that's just rendering for a minute and there we go so let's go find that you can see that's our graphic there i want to grab the whole thing find a spot where it's going to go which will be there we'll let that render out okay so we've got this in so let's see as you can see it's going to drop in so let's play this back if this video was helpful to you if you learned something about the overlays graphics and things that we've done in final cut pro today give it a thumbs up also if you have any thoughts about ways and there we go all we had to do is drop it on there we didn't have to apply any key it just worked straight away out of the box we just drop that in and it's a graphic motion element with a sound and it just works hey guys i hope this video was helpful to you if you have any more thoughts about the overlay graphics that we talked about and the ways we've done it in final cut pro leave your comment down below if you have a better way of doing it or a different way of doing it different is not wrong it's just different leave your comments down below as well join the conversation right now and if the video is really helpful to you give it a thumbs up and if you thought this yeah, it was quite an honorary. Give it a sarcastic thumbs down, up, down. Hey, just give it all a thumbs up. If you want to watch more, click the videos here and here. And if you can't find that subscribe button below, we've got one here for you. So click on that and share it with your friends.